Hello aviators, Sky here, and today we're having not the usual encyclopedic, as much as an analytical video. A story about the future of the Russian flagship airliner. Let's begin. In 1988, the first Soviet long-range wide-body airliner Il-96 made its maiden flight. Equipped with the new engines and avionics, Il-96-300 significantly exceeded both the long-haul Il-62 and its direct predecessor, Il-86. However, among the advantages there was another one. Illusion engineers took into account the problems that arose when they tried to modify the Il-86, and during the Il-96 development they gave it a huge modernization potential in various directions. All of this could make the airliner quite successful, if not for the collapse of the USSR and the rapid decline of the Russian aviation industry in the 1990s. The Il-86 production was stopped in 1997, and even though the Il-96 continued to be made, just 30 planes is not an impressive result. Nevertheless, the modernization potential of the aircraft played to its advantage. In 1993, the updated Il-96M was raised to the sky, the first child of the joint work of the Russian and American aviators. The aircraft received longer fuselage, Rockwell Collins avionics and Pratt Whitney engines from the family of engines used on the Boeing 757 and C-17 Globemaster III. The capacity increased to 435 passengers and the range almost to 7,000 miles. The airliner even received the FAA certificate, but of course did not find much demand. It was 1997, Boeing had just developed the brand new 777 model, and the Russian airlines did not have enough money for such planes. As a result, the prototype eventually returned to the homeland, received the old NK-86 engines and appeared at MAX 2003 airshow as an Il-96-400. In 2009, the plane was demolished. Il-96-400 Nevertheless, the impressive performance of the Il-96M did not allow it to go down in history forever. Moreover, in the 1990s, large twin-engine airliners had not yet conquered the sky, and in Europe, the Airbus A340, having close performance, was gaining popularity. Illusion Bureau decided not to miss the opportunity and created a new version on the basis of the Il-96M, replacing foreign components with the Russian ones. The index was left Il-96-400, but it was a modernized machine. The onboard systems were improved, and the new PS90A1 engines with thrust up to 171 kN were mounted under the wing. Attempts to sell the passenger version were unsuccessful, but the freighters were in demand. Several aircraft were operated by Atlant Soyuz and Palot Airlines. After some time, one of the aircraft was modified and used as the airborne control station. Similarly, the Russian Ministry of Defense announced plans to purchase several Il-96-400 as the aerial refueling tankers. Il-96-400M After the complication of the political background between Russia and the United States and the subsequent sanctions confrontation, arose the question of continuing and even expanding the production of native long-range airliners. At least until the mid-2020s, when a new joint Russian-Chinese CR-929 airliner will start operations. However, neither Il-96-300 nor Il-96-400 are efficient enough for our times, even for the government customers. The Ministry of Defense probably wants to order the aircraft, but with better performance than the ones they have now. The Illusion Design Bureau, as well as the UAC, had to make the aircraft effective and competitive in the current conditions. Of course, nobody planned to develop a completely new airliner. There were no resources, nor time. They have to work with the existing technologies and preferably with minimal expenses. The Il-96-300, with all due respect, is obsolete. At the current stage of the aviation market, the 235-300 seat four-engine passenger airliner cannot be competitive at all. One of the most common ways to evaluate the efficiency of a commercial airliner is the cost per passenger seat, and if the costs fuel, maintenance, etc. cannot be significantly reduced, then the number of seats in the airplane can be increased. Therefore, the modernization plan included the increase of capacity, and the larger 435-passenger Il-96-400 became a basis. 
Nevertheless, in the current iteration, the IL-96-400 still does not satisfy the customer's requirements. It needs a serious update. Let's see what they can do about it. Power Plant The IL-96-300 power plant is based on the PS-90A engines. The IL-96-400 is heavier than its little brother, and to provide the necessary flight performance it is equipped with four PS-90A1 turbofans. A very serious problem of the PS-90A engine's family has always been their relatively low reliability and maintainability. Often the main problem of commercial operation of the IL-96 was precisely its engines. However, through many years these engines were brought to acceptable levels, and the new PS90A1, A2 and A3 can already be considered more effective. Not the GE and X, of course, but acceptable. Or can engineers count on the more advanced engines? The first thing that comes to mind when pronouncing the phrase new Russian aircraft engine is PD-14. The PD-14 is the newest civilian turbofan, developed first of all for the MC-21 airliner. In addition, the leaders of the Russian aircraft industry are betting on this engine in the long term. However, with all the advantages, the engines are not powerful enough to be installed on the IL-96-400M. Often in discussion is the option of installing PD-14M, the more powerful version of PD-14, developed for the larger MC-21-400. But it can still be not powerful enough for the IL-96-400M. Another solution could be considered the PD-18, the engine created on the basis of PD-14. With thrust of nearly 180 kN, it is closest to what should be installed under the IL-96-400M wing. However, at the moment it is unknown when this engine will be created and will start the operations. Perhaps, taking into account the modernization of the IL-96, the creation of this engine will be accelerated. So. For the IL-96-400M there are three options. PS-90A3, the closest to the implementation by terms and cost. PD-14M, promising but not powerful enough. PD-18, the most ideal option, but the terms of its creation are so far unknown. So given this short development time, the updated PS engines will remain under the wing. Avionics. The aircraft avionics are unlikely to be heavily modified. This may delay the development and certification process, and may grow on the project budget. It was officially stated that it is planned to modernize the cable network of the aircraft, in order to increase efficiency and reduce the mass. Another important issue is of course the cabin and control system. The IL-96 is operated by a crew of three people, which is no longer relevant. Even for such a giant as A380, two pilots are enough. Ideally, of course, it would be good to unify the IL-96-400M cockpit with the new MC-21 cabin, but again, it can take too much time and money. Besides, the American Rockwell Collins actively participates in the creation of the MC-21 cockpit. Technically and economically, it is not a problem, but politically it may become a barrier, considering that most of the planes will still go to the government structures. In any case, a lot depends on the proposals of the concern Radioelectric Technologies, which will be developing this equipment. Interior At first glance, the interior issue seems rather trivial. However, we must take into account that the interior of the IL-96-300 is already considered outdated. Without the luggage compartments above the central row, it is inconvenient to handle luggage. Many elements and materials are obsolete. Besides, there are no modern multimedia systems for the passengers in the cabin. In addition, the old IL-96-300 has a smaller cabin and capacity than the future model. Taking into account modern requirements, the cabin is likely to be remade almost completely. New seats, multimedia, luggage, internet and other bonuses. Another interesting nuance is the proposal of some operators to create high-density two-class interior for 415 passengers. Moreover, the density will increase not due to the number of rows, as it is usually done, but by adding one more seat in the central row. The current IL-96-300 layout is 3 plus 3 plus 3, and the option 3 plus 4 plus 3 is proposed. Such an arrangement allows to increase capacity, increase profitability of operation, and is often used in the economy class of Boeing 777. However, the Boeing 777's cabin is a bit wider, 
With this fact in mind, the 10 seats in a row layout can be uncomfortable. The number of rows will probably not increase. The current 32 inch seat pitch is standard. Reducing this number is a common practice on medium haul aircraft, for example in low cost airlines. But on long range flights it will have a very negative effect on the level of flight comfort. Landing gear. Another issue in terms of modernization can be considered the landing gear. IL-96, like its predecessor IL-86, has a three bogey main landing gear. At one time it was necessary, given the huge mass of the aircraft, low quality of the runways, as well as the difficulties with the gears themselves. But in the 21st century this practice is no longer optimal. More than two legs on the main landing gears are used only on the IL-96, Boeing 747 and Airbus A380, the second and the third planes are, putting it mildly, much heavier. The rest of today's models have two bogies, even the wide bodies like A350 and Boeing 777. The central bogey in this case is an appendix. It is just an additional mechanism requiring maintenance, occupying internal space and adding mass. However, given the limited budgets and timeframes, it is necessary to look for a balance. Which is better, to create a new, more effective landing gear or to leave the old one and save resources on development and certification? The answer to this question is yet to be revealed. IL-96-400M and CR-929 CR-929 is a Chinese and Russian developed long-range wide-body airliner with a capacity of 250 to 300 seats. It is assumed that this aircraft will start operations in the mid-2020s. It will be equipped with the optional European or American Rolls-Royce, Pratt Whitney or General Electric, as well as the future Russian PD-35 engines. At first glance, it may seem like Russia is creating two wide-body airliners at the same time, which is strange. However, it must be taken into account that these two aircraft belong to different markets. The CR-929 accommodates 250 to 300 passengers, while the IL-96-400M seats from 330 to 435 passengers. In the model line, the IL-96 takes a step above the CR-929. These airliners are different and complementary to each other. If comparing to the American and European model lines, the CR-929 is closer to the Boeing 787 and Airbus A330 while the IL-96-400M to Boeing 777 and Airbus A350. IL-96X In addition, by the end of the 2020s, when the CR-929 will receive the PD-35, the same engine can become the basis of the updated IL-96 power plant. Let's call this new model X. This is the IL-96 version with two engines. This subject is pretty popular among the experts and in the media. The IL-96X can get not only the new engines, but also a twin-engine scheme, improved avionics and a new composite wing. Under these conditions, the IL-96 may end up quite an impressive airplane. In addition, the issue of distribution of production capacities may be solved. The CR-929 will be assembled in China. Everything is assembled in China. So the IL-96X will remain at home. One plane per country. Again, there is a question, which is better, to create this new upgraded version of the existing IL-96 or to create a completely new airliner? A new plane, based on the experience of the CR-929, would be more preferable technologically. But again, everything depends on the money. The CR-929 will cost Russia and China over 20 billion dollars, and the creation of the second, even larger airliner is unlikely to be cheaper. And this is the story, based, however, rather on my assumptions. We'll just have to wait for the facts. Maybe I guessed right somewhere, maybe not. Maybe the UAC has a couple of special aces up their sleeves, and the new airliner will be even cooler. Or maybe it's all just a PR show. All that remains is to wait. And to like and subscribe for the channel, of course. Fast flights and soft landings to you.